station. What about second breakfast? Greetings, Earthlings! If there's one thing my fat ass loves more than this game that we enjoy, it's food. Because why have one breakfast when you can have second breakfast? And why today I'm going to be bringing you a fun deck tech built around Pedigrin Took. For two and a green, we've got a 2-3 Halfling Citizen with a static ability that when you create one or more tokens of any kind, you create that many plus a food token. Now while that ability on its own seems sort of one dimensional, there's a few ways to really abuse that and make it fun. So let's get into it. Now right off the hop, I'm going to preface this deck by saying it's not a super strong deck by any means, as it utilizes the somewhat underwhelming but underrated mechanic of spore counters. Now for those who don't know, spore counters were a mechanic introduced way back in Fallen Empires with cards like Thorn Thalid but were revisited in other sets with cards like Vitaspor Thalid, Spore Sower Thalid, and Thalid Germinator. It, it's a, it, it's, uh, it's, it's Thalids. It's Thalids, that's all it is. <laughs> but the thing that makes the mechanics somewhat underpowered in the Commander format is that they're mainly put on as beginning of your upkeep, which in a four player format, that can take a while. But for that reason, this deck is filled to the brim with proliferate effects with cards like Canker Bloom, Evolution Sage, Karn's Bastion, and Throne of Geth to crank those spore counters and be able to utilize their abilities, which is where Peregrine synergizes. Now, cards like the aforementioned Thalid Germinator, the original Thalid, and Thalid Shell Dweller let you remove your spore counters to dump out Sapperling tokens, which then nets you a food per generated token. And this deck is mostly a budget build, but I did include Doubling Season because I had it laying around and unsure of a deck to use it for. But don't let that dissuade you. Cards like Clock of Omens and Trading Post can make use of those food artifacts to be able to do some extra fun stuff. Keep in mind, food tokens are artifacts. Now for instance, if you have Clock of Omens and Boxing Ring, it can have you go infinite if you had a creature fight that turn. Create a treasure and a food with Peregrine on board, then tap them to untap the boxing ring and keep going. You've got to jump through some hoops to make it happen, but if you can pull it off, use those infinite artifacts to abuse Throne of Geth and infinitely proliferate your spore counters, then you can either make an infinite number of sapperlings to abuse, or you can deplete any amount of counters from a card like Thorn Thal to take out your competition. Now a Gilded Goose of this deck, I would say, is Champion Lamholt. With the amount of sapperlings this deck can generate, and the amount of proliferating that can happen, she can get massive in a hurry, and let your weenie sneak by unnoticed. There should be a joke there about a weenie sneaking by unnoticed, but I'll leave it at that. There's also cards like Plague Mob Beast that can use your tokens as fodder to bump up your board more. <clears throat> Rishkar Pima Renegade to utilize your Thalids as mana dorks, and Fangren Marauder that can make your life total all levels of insane whenever you eat food which, like, relatable, I feel great when I eat food. <laughs> Overall, I'd say this deck runs at probably a 5 power level with an underlying 6 creep. There are infinite combos, but as previously mentioned, you need to jump through hoops to get them, and it isn't a guaranteed win if you do pull it off. But if you'd like to see a full deck list of this and discuss some fun stuff in the comments, uh, I'll link the Moxfield page to this in the description, as usual. And I would love to discuss stuff about it, because I think this is a really fun deck. Uh, these little uncommon legendaries, you can build really niche strategies around, so they're really fun. Uh, but yeah, until next time.